Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our SexWise webinar on pleasure, pain, and problems. Um, my name is Becky Burbage. I'm the Deputy Chief Executive of FPA, and I'm here with Karen O'Sullivan, our clinical consultant, uh, who is a registered sexual health nurse with many years of experience talking about all things sexual health. Um, we're going to run through things in the next sort of 30 minutes. Um, um, so we're going to give you kind of a brief overview of pleasure and ways you can help help your patients to better sexual well-being, some common causes of pain, and some common problems. Um, just to let you know, the web, this webinar is part of our SexWise program. Um, if you're here and you're registered, you probably already know about SexWise. But just to let you know, it's our um, it's our health promotion program funded by Public Health England, and we cover all things contraception, pregnancy, STIs, and pleasure, as you will find out today. Um, and kind of one of the reasons why we really wanted to do this webinar, it's slightly different to some of the ones that we've done before, which have focused very much on kind of the contraception and STI side of things, is that sex is meant to be pleasurable. And that's kind of one of the things that was really important to us when we were developing SexWise. Um, it's one of the things that often gets lost when we're talking about sexual health, that sexual well-being is about so much more than STIs STIs, um, and sort of planning or preventing pregnancy. Like pleasure is really fundamental to people being able to enjoy their sex life and have a sort of fulfilling sex life. Um, and yet so much sex education only focuses on what not to do um, and kind of the terrible dangers of sex and doesn't doesn't actually leave much room for exploring pleasure and enjoying yourself. Um, and that's one of the things we really wanted to address the SexWise website. Um, and at the moment, we don't have a huge amount of content on pleasure or well-being, and that's something we're really looking to change over the next few months. So you'll be finding a lot more content on the SexWise website that you'll be able to signpost to um, if you need to. Um, and I think professionals really do have a vital role to play, although we're kind of all used to, again, talking about contraception, talking about STIs, talking about pregnancy and abortion. Um, just by going that extra mile and sort of taking a sex positive approach, opening up conversations and kind of you know asking people how sex is for them and, and thinking about whether people might be having problems, you can really help or well, you can really make a big difference, I think, and you can break down the taboo and stigma that we still have around talking about enjoying sex. Um so this isn't going to be sort of um, an exhaustive list of everything you can do. And one thing to emphasize is we don't expect you, you know, you're not, you don't have to be an expert in, in all these things. It's more about thinking about how you can open up that conversation. Um, is there something that a patient's not telling you but is really bothering them? There's just really small ways that you might make a really big sort of difference to somebody. Um, and so this is to give you kind of some starting points, um, some conversation starters and some things to think about as well as places to signpost onto. So I'm going to hand you over to Karen who's going to kick things off now. Hi, thank you. Uh, what we're looking at here is what is sexual pleasure and it does mean different things to different people and not all of these need to be included all of the time but we've given you some ideas here of, of, of some of the things that are involved so pleasure sexual pleasure may include excitement intimacy desire lust closeness satisfaction orgasm switching off being very present in the moment doesn't have to be spontaneous and it may sometimes feel like more of a chore but should definitely not include unwanted or unplanned pain any kind of coercion or non-consent stress or worry so one of the things that I talk to a lot about um, with patients uh, is the sexual response cycle um, actually draw pictures and, and look back at uh, all the uh, research-based evidence that the lovely Masters and Johnson did all those years ago. So there are distinct phases of sexual arousal, although not all the phases necessarily happen during all sex. So the simple version is sexual desire leading to sexual arousal, uh, plateau, maybe orgasm, maybe not, maybe multiple orgasm, and then resolution when everything goes back to normal. The response may not be linear, and it's important to remember that it invo involves both, uh, both the physiological and the psychological, so mind and body um, are involved in this. And attraction and emotional intimacy will be important for some people uh, for any of those things to happen. 
um, other, for other people it's not necessary all the time but it's something else to, to consider um, that if things are not right for people um, then things won't work well. So sexual partners won't necessarily go through the same stages at the same time. Uh, it's not necessarily a problem, communication is the key. I think there was one uh, course that I taught where somebody, one of the participants said, oh I get it, it's like when you go on holiday together and you have a great time in the first day and then one of you comes home early and the other one's left on their own for the rest of the holiday. <laughs> Um, and I thought that was a brilliant way of, of, of looking at the differences. So if you can communicate about it, that's the really important thing. So a problem or a perceived problem during the sexual response cycle can prevent sex from being enjoyable. So again, it's, it's not necessarily a problem unless both partners um, or one partner feel that it is a problem. Um, so uh, if you look at statistics on premature ejaculation, for example, how soon is too soon? And if it's not a problem for people, it's not a problem. Satisfying sex doesn't always have to be about penetrative sex either. It might be oral sex or masturbation, for example. And many women won't orgasm solely from penis and vagina sex. So I always talk about the importance of foreplay, hugging, touching, kissing, stroking, uh, and emotional intimacy. So uh, again, not for everybody all the time, but the hugging, touching, kissing, stroking all, all leads into the sexual response cycle. So it's really important to talk about those with people. An understanding of how bodies work can help people to have more realistic expectations. Um, and this is why good relationships and sex education is so important. And we've obviously got consultation on the curriculum for the new um, uh, RSE at the moment, so do get involved with that. Unrealistic depictions of sex in the media and in porn can cause unrealistic expectations, so it's important to address those issues and there's lots of really good resources about how to, to discuss porn um, with patients uh, and clients and in um, relationships and sex education. The understanding reproduction information on SexWise is a good starting point that you can signpost to and we will be adding more info in that section about the sexual response cycle and how bodies work um, soon, so watch out for that. Body image is something that affects people, worries about what's normal. People with a penis may worry about size, shape, how long before ejaculation. People with a vulva may worry about the appearance of the labia, tightness, dryness. Um, the effects of illness on surgery or surgery on the body, for example cancer, can affect how people feel about themselves. And we've put some links at the um, end of this presentation showing the wide var variation in normal penises and vulvas. Um, so things like the labia library, willy worries, uh, we've got lots of, of pictures for you to, to have a look at. I also signpost patients to these as well. Um, and sometimes we'll look at them uh, together uh, in clinics or, or in the sexual health um, setting um, so, that, so that patients can, can have a look at what's normal as well, resolve some of their worries. So <clears throat> we've mentioned that the key, one of the key things to do is to communicate. So we're looking here for um, some ideas for you. So look for opportunities to raise the topic. Too many people suffer in silence because they think that pain or problems are the norm and they're too embarrassed to ask and nobody asks them. Can affect all age groups. A 2015 survey found that young women may not seek help from professionals as they're embarrassed to say the word vagina or don't have a word that they're comfortable to use or think you won't understand what their word for that part of the body means. And they're worried about internal examinations. Women who've recently given birth or are going through menopause may welcome discussion and help, so raise the topic whenever they come and see you about anything else. Uh, communication with men. Younger men can often worry about premature ejaculation. Older men may be more concerned with erectile dysfunction. But having said that, please don't stereotype by age. Uh, it's really important to, to be aware that issues can happen throughout the life of, of, of people. 
around half of the men between the ages of 40 and 70 will have had some degree of erectile dysfunction. So again, it's just showing you that it's normal um, for everything not to work perfectly all the time. Many people have or desire an active sex life into much later life, but may need some help uh, uh, to achieve this due to um, the normal processes of aging. And what was normal for you when you were a young person may be very different from when you're um, older. So communication again, other people may need extra help and support to enjoy fulfilling sex lives um, and may feel unequipped to ask for help. Um, people with illnesses, so following um, surgery or treatment, uh, it's very common for people who've had a heart attack, for example, to be given advice on exercise, um, but do people talk about sex? Uh, so I think I, I had sessions with cardiologists um, and we, we spent um, quite a long time talking about how to talk about resuming sexual activity um, uh, so, that, so that people felt comfortable to, to ask the questions. People with disabilities, including learning disabilities, um, people who've experienced sexual violence, it's really important to, to look at all the issues that might affect people and work with ways of overcoming them uh, to give support. So I've <clears throat> got some conversation starters for you here. You might want to say, some people find that the side effects of your medication have an impact on their sex life. If that's something you've noticed, I'd be pleased to talk to you about it. One of my favorites. When you have sex, is it comfortable and okay for you? And it's surprising how many answers that you get from there that, uh, well, no, actually it isn't. Or, well, sometimes it's a problem because of, so I think that's a really good question. Um, we could give leaflets out. We often give leaflets out. This leaflet gives information about sexual health, but I'd be happy to discuss different aspects of sexual pleasure with you. We have different types of condoms available to help everyone who uses them enjoy the sex that they're having. And there's such a wide variety of condoms now, so um, if you're not uh, familiar with them, uh, it, it would be really great to, to uh, increase your knowledge. Tell me about the problems you're having. This is a great open-ended question, and sometimes people will find that uh, um, opens a, a, a real door to being able to express their worries or concerns. Again, resources. We've uh, got a sex-wise sexual history taking um, webinar um, that you can access, and that's got answers or suggestions for questions on there. And the Sexual Advice Association uh, has a downloadable um, fact sheet um, on taking a sexual history using open-ended questions. Um, also look out for Sexual Health Week, which is coming up um, the last week in September, because we're going to have more information or help for you um, there. So be aware of the consent and safeguarding concerns. You could ask things like, when did you last have sex? Was it sex you wanted and agreed to? Could you say no to sex that you didn't want? Um, and as I've said, our, our sex, sex, Sexual Health Week will have lots of resources around uh, consent uh, coming up the last week in September. So in order to get any communication at all, it's really good to create a welcoming atmosphere. This could be displaying information about sexual well-being and relationships or posters which tell patients that they can ask about any, anything about sexual health um, and their sex life in confidence. So having a confidentiality statement or poster in the waiting room and actually posters that, that, that mention the word sex so you can talk to us about anything. You don't have to know all the answers. Um, the main thing is to have resources and know where to refer patients to for more information. And we've put lots of, of resources and um, uh, website addresses for that at the end of this presentation for you. Discuss pleasure and well-being within your team. Um, so it's helpful if, if you can talk in your team. Um, people will have other ideas, places that they can um, perhaps refer you to as well. Um, share the knowledge within you and connect with services in your local area that offer help and support so that you can refer on. So masturbation, 
Um, it's one of those uh, words that some people are very uncomfortable with, but the more you say it, the nicer it is. It's a lovely word, masturbation. <laughs> one of the most popular links on SexWise. You don't have to teach people how to masturbate, but talking about it can help to reassure about what's normal. There can still be a real taboo around masturbation, um, often more for people with a vulva, uh, with it being seen as dirty. But reassure patients it's a normal, safe, and enjoyable way to learn about their own sexual response cycle and what they enjoy. This can also help them to communicate what they like um, to a partner. So helps really helps with the communication. Masturbation can be difficult to achieve. Um, can be uh, can help if it's difficult to achieve orgasm with a partner. It uh, can be useful to practice condom use during masturbation, something that I often suggest. The first time you use a condom should not be when you're having sex with someone else, but when you're having sex with yourself. Uh, and masturbation can be just a relaxing, fun activity, no reason required. It's a great stress buster. Toys. As well as being fun, toys can assist in various situations, including people who are unable to orgasm during sex, people with motor difficulties, people who have trouble getting or sustaining an erection, if illness or surgery has decreased sexual sensation, and also great for masturbation. Exploring different sexual positions can help. So if penetrative vaginal sex is difficult or painful, um, there may be other causes that need addressing with that, but um, if it is difficult or painful, then different positions may help. Different positions if one or both partners has a disability. With sex or masturbation, when there are physical or motor difficulties, and giving patients reassurance that it's okay to explore and talk about different positions. Um, we've all heard of the Kama Sutra. It's got lots of pictures of lots of different situ uh, positions that people can try. Um, and not all of them, some of them are for the very athletic, admittedly, but not all of them. So it's really good to experiment. Um, try anything, give it a go. And do remind patients that sex isn't just about penetration. So we talked earlier about sometimes um, things can be dry or painful. So we've got answers for that as well. Moisturizers, lubes, and condoms. Moisturizers and lubes can help make sex much more comfortable in a range of situations. And there's a wide variety. So there's cool and warm lubes. There's gels or massage oils. Um, be careful about oils with condoms, though. <laughs> Um, Water-based lubes, uh, definitely not massage oils. Um, but condoms, again, there's a wide variety available, local anesthetic to help with premature ejaculation, different textures, etc. Do be careful, though, that the condoms that you're giving are for the person that has the premature ejaculation and not for the partner um, and, the, and the patient themselves may not know. It's got to be given directly to the, to the person, otherwise they might be a bit confused about what's happening here. You don't need to be an expert or have the answer. Um, you can signpost, so lots of things that, that, that you can um, get for help. You can signpost to the Sexual Advice Association. We've got specialist physios that uh, will help with pelvic floor exercises, uh, psychosexual services, um, and there are links at the end of this presentation to some sex positive sex toy websites as well. Sometimes it's just about pointing people in the right direction. So let's move on to pain during or after sex, dyspareunia, big long word. Sex shouldn't ever be painful unless it's pain that's been chosen and agreed to, which is very different. More common in women, but, but also affects men. And the um, NATSAL, the third national survey of sexual attitudes and lifestyles, found that around one in 13 sexually active women had experienced painful sex lasting three months or more. So that's a high number often associated with other problems, including vaginal dryness, lack of interest or enjoyment, difficulty climaxing compared to women without pain. Causes of vaginal pain can include STIs or vaginal infections. So know your symptoms um, so that appropriate treatment can be offered. It's something that we, we need to rule out. 
vaginal dryness could be due to lack of arousal or, or menopause. Um, uh, it's a common problem with uh, older women, so it's definitely worth asking that question, is sex comfortable and okay for you? Irritation can be caused, for example, by perfumed products, soaps, spermicide, condoms. Um, so again, let's, let's look at uh, um, you know, what people are putting in their baths. So I've found a number of women that use Dettol in their baths. That's definitely going to cause irritation. So we need to talk about wider things um, than just, just sex. Vaginismus, position and speed or depth of penetration can sometimes call, cause pain. So exploring positions can help. I would often suggest woman on top because she can control the um, depth uh, and of, uh, penetration with that. So that can often help. Causes of pelvic pain can include STIs, pelvic inflammatory disease, endometriosis. Many women will go a long time without a diagnosis um, and be putting up with things because they're either um, embarrassed to ask, don't know how to ask, um, or think that it's normal. Fibroids, bowel problems. Causes of testicular pain or a painful penis can include, again, back to our STIs or infections, know your symptoms so appropriate treatment can be offered, it can be tears or fissures in the foreskin, tight foreskin, this is more common than people would think. Um, I've certainly had a number of um, patients attend over the years um, uh, who've been really concerned that they can't withdraw their foreskin uh, or push it back afterwards. I had one young man that really sticks in my memory saying that, that, that uh, he couldn't carry on living um, with this problem um, and it took a little while to work out that that was the problem and a lot of reassurance is easily fixed and life was, was worth going on with. Um, so it was a very powerful consultation for me. Arousal without ejaculating, um, colloquial term blue balls, not harmful, temporary, will resolve, sometimes Patients just need a bit of reassurance that uh, ejaculation isn't essential um, every time. Um, certainly used um, reasons for um, saying no to sex as to, um, you know, um, okay, so the question that some people will, will ask is, um, if we don't go the whole way, then I'll be really uncomfortable. It's like, well, let's go back to the masturbation. Masturbation will help. <laughs> and that's another thing that uh, uh, we can signpost people to. It's pleasurable, nice. Problems may be caused by lots of different factors. Um, pain may be causing a problem, um, or problems may be caused by pain. So it's quite interesting to try and uh, look at differentiating between the two. Physical illness or mental health problems. Changes in lifestyle, um, such as having a baby, loss of a job, moving to a new place, partner having a relationship with somebody else. Um, I, again, another consultation that sticks in my mind is a, a man that said that he couldn't ejaculate uh, anymore, that his sperm had died, um, uh, and it turned out that uh, his partner had, seen some, had been seeing somebody else um, and it all fell apart. The uh, partner came back, but things weren't the same. So we worked out that he was actually really angry with his partner. Busy, stressful lives, not having time to connect with a partner or knowing how to communicate. So that word, communication, really, really important. Problematic use of pornography. Common problems in women include pain during or after sex, vaginal dryness, irritation, problems getting aroused or reaching orgasm, loss of interest in sex, and this could be physiological, psychological, or a mix between the two. Common problems in men, getting and sustaining an erection, erectile dysfunction or impotence, ejaculation problems can be premature, delayed, retrograde, loss of interest in sex, again physiological, psychological or a mix, pain during or after sex. Getting to the root of the problem, it's really important to ask the questions, looking at medical reasons, physiological, psychological, ill health, and it, don't forget the STIs. Self-image, how do people feel about themselves? Lifestyle factors, smoking, drinking, recreational drugs can all have an effect on sexual function. Lack of emotional satisfaction or intimate connection, no sexual thoughts or fantasies, 
current or past abuse or violence? Again, ask, is that sex want that you wanted and agreed to? So ways to help. Simply talking through a problem and feeling listened to can help some patients find a way forward and feel more confident uh, in talking to a partner about the problems. Look at, is there a medical or physiological cause that can be treated? Other problems may require referring on to psychosexual services if available, or you may need to suggest other sources of help and advice. The Sexual Advice Association is a really good place to start with lots of fact sheets um, and information which are easily downloaded. So, very brief run through pleasure, pain and problems. I'm just going to hand you back to Becky. Oh, thanks Karen. So I hope you all found that very useful. Um, and say we'll we'll make the um, we'll send the recording round at the end so you can refer back to the slides if you need to. Um, what I'm going to do now is just see if I can open up the uh, floor to questions, as it were. Uh, if you bear with me a second, you should see hopefully um, a little box pop up on your screen where you can type in any questions um, if you need to. Uh, and while we just wait to see if uh, anything comes through there, um, I'll just run you through our resources list that we've got. Um, so we've got quite a comprehensive list of resources here. Um, so as Karen said, we've refer, we've referred to the Sexual Advice Association a lot. They're really good. Um, they've got a lot of fact sheets um, and all sorts of things that you can signpost patients to as well as refer to uh, yourself. Um, we've got various information on sex-wise, um, and we'll be adding more and more on that over the coming months that you'll be able to signpost patients to. We've got the links here uh, for the resources that Karen mentioned earlier, some really great resources here, the Labia Library, Great Wall of Vagina, um, The Guardian did a feature in their Weekend magazine a while back where they featured pictures of 100 penises, just showing the wide variety of shapes, sizes. Um, and that's a really good one to look at. And the um, Willy Worries and Women's Worries is great as well. And again, has lots of um, lots of resources, lots of images that you can kind of look at and share with patients if they are worried about body image. Um, various other things here as well. Um, Relate are always really good. Um, the sort of relationship problems. My Body Back is an amazing project. Um, which I think they're only based in London at the moment. Um, but they uh, deal with women who have experienced the sexual violence um, and they kind of run various clinics so for women who are nervous about maybe going for um, a cervical screening um, they, they run a maternity clinic as well in um, the Royal London Hospital um, but they're a really great place to signpost to if you do um, have any patients who have experienced kind of abuse or violence in a and need some extra help and support. Uh, a few other links there to other bits and pieces that you, you'll be able to check out later. And um, just some sex positive sex toy websites we've linked to there as well. Um, and these people we just feel are particularly good at kind of um, understanding kind of the whole process of sex. They're not just there to sell toys, they're really genuinely interested in kind of helping people as well. So there are some good ones to be familiar with um, and be able to signpost patients to. Um, I think everyone's feeling very shy or we're having a technical issue because we haven't had any questions come through uh, at all. So if I mean if you do think of any questions at the end, you've got a burning question that you haven't been able to ask here, then please do email us as well. So you can email um sexwise at fpa.org.uk uh, and we will do our best to answer you. Um, in the meantime, I hope you have found this uh, webinar useful. Um, it's the last of our webinars for this year. Now we're going to be running some more in spring 2019. Uh, we are not sure what the topics will be yet. They're still to be confirmed, and we welcome your topic suggestions. So if there's something you feel will be particularly useful, or something you want a recap on, um, that we can kind of run through in 30 minutes at lunchtime. We're really happy to, to hear your suggestions and get that, get that scheduled in. Um, and just to remind you as well that FPA um, runs training for professionals throughout the year. So we've got a wide range of topics, um, some courses that you can book onto and some that are available on request. So do have a look at our training pages and see what's available. We've got a really good new one actually that we've um, 
we've just added, which is about supporting people with learning disabilities uh, around masturbation. Um, and uh, I think that's going to be really good. So have a look at that one if uh, you work with people with learning disabilities at all. Don't forget to sign up for our updates so that you can um, be kept informed of the next set of webinars. Um, I think all that remains really is for me to say thank you very much for um, spending your lunch time with us. We really appreciate it. Uh, we'll send you around the recording afterwards. Um, and anyone who's kind of attended the live webinar uh, for sort of 15 minutes or more uh, gets a certificate of attendance. Uh, I think I'm going to close the webinar in a minute and you should just get a little something pop up on your screen that asks you to rate it. Um, so please do that and leave any feedback if you want to because that really helps us um, improve in the future. Also, thank you very much indeed and um, have a good rest of your afternoon.